Now there's one more really cool thing about orbits that's worth knowing, and this is the topic of geosynchronous orbits. And you might be able to figure out what this means just by looking at the words here. Geo means Earth, and sync basically means the same, like if two people are in sync, they're thinking the same way or doing the same thing. And chronos, that comes from the Greek word for time. So think Earth, same, time. And here's the idea. Imagine uh, standing and spinning something around your head. So you've got a rope and there's a rock on the end and you're twirling it around. And you've no doubt done something like this before you spin something around. And you know that if the rope is really short, it spins around and around really fast. And if the rope is really long, it goes around more slowly. Well, planetary orbits uh, or orbits of something going around a planet uh, move in a similar fashion. So if you have the Earth here, something going around the Earth will orbit relatively quickly if it's close to the Earth. And something very far away will take a long time. For example, the space shuttle orbits in low Earth orbit, just barely out of the atmosphere, just a couple of hundred miles above the surface. And the space shuttle goes around the Earth about once every hour and a half. So it's about 90 minutes for an orbit. If you go way out, the moon is about a quarter of a million miles away and the orbit, the moon's orbit takes about one month. So the farther things are away, the longer it takes to orbit and the closer they are, the shorter time it takes to orbit. Now there's a distance in here in between these two, in between the low Earth orbit of the space shuttle and the one month orbit of the moon. There's a, a distance in here at which an object will make exactly one orbit per day. Okay, and this orbit once in 24 hours. And an object orbiting once every 24 hours is said to be in a geosynchronous orbit. And here's why. If you picture the Earth here, and let's picture the equator like this, and so the poles of the Earth, you can imagine the Earth's axis running through there. And so the Earth is, is rotating on its axis, so let's imagine it's spinning this way. It's spinning around, and now let's imagine an object in orbit. And here's the orbit out here. So the orbit goes around the Earth, kind of seen in a perspective view, something like that. Now let's imagine that it's at just the right distance away so that it makes one orbit per day. While this object goes around in its orbit once per day, the Earth also goes around once per day. So let's imagine that the object is right here, and you're standing on the Earth right there. Well, as this object goes around once per day, you also go around once per day. So relative to you, the satellite that's orbiting the Earth, it doesn't appear to change position in the sky because as it rotates, you rotate. And if it rotates through, through 30 degrees of angle, you also rotate through 30 degrees of angle. If you are both making one lap per day, you're both rotating at the same angular speed, the same number of degrees per hour. So the result is an object like that, if it's in an equatorial orbit, an orbit where the plane of the orbit is the same as the plane of the equator, then that object will stay right over the same location on the Earth all the time. And that's a good thing. That's where they put communications satellites, like a satellite for DISH TV or something like that, or any kind of satellite that's beaming a signal regularly down to Earth. You want to be able to set up an antenna and aim it at the satellite to pick up the signal. And you don't want to have to have the antenna tracking the satellite all the time. That satellite will stay in the same point in the sky the entire time, all day and all night, if it's in a geosynchronous orbit. Because as it moves in its orbit, the Earth is also rotating and it stays exactly over the same point all the time. So you set up your little dish antenna and aim it right at the satellite and you don't have to readjust it. There are many, many satellites up there right now in geosynchronous orbit. I don't know exactly how many, but it's uh, going to be either in the dozens or hundreds, all these little satellites. And you might think, well, isn't it getting crowded up there? And the answer is not really, because space is really, really big. There's a lot of room. I mean, think how big something like Texas is. 
well, the amount of space there is in this ring around the Earth at that distance is gigantic compared to Texas. There's plenty of room for millions and millions of satellites. It's nowhere near crowded. But there are a lot of them up there now, and they, they serve a very useful purpose of being able to be in communication with the Earth and with things on the Earth without having their position relative to the Earth changing all the time.